All right, everybody, welcome to the first ever weekly recap for Ark Survival. My name is Red Shinigami, and today we are going to be looking at my current version 3 mobile breeding and taming center. So without further ado, let's do the grand reveal. So this is this is it. This is a completely mobile uh, base, so to speak. It's a it's a breeding center. It can hold up to two um, two wyverns at the most, uh, three to four rexes, one giga, no brontos or anything larger than a, a giga. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, uh, how I got it set up is I've used three mods. So if you want to recreate this in your own world, you need to have Three mods. One, you need to have Structures Plus, or otherwise known as S Plus. You need CKF, otherwise known as Castle, Keeps, and Forts. And you need Platforms Plus. Those are the three things you need. Platform Plus is the only thing that is an absolute must. Everything else you can do with vanilla. Everything else is purely decorative. So, stru or not Structures Plus, sorry, but the Platforms Plus is the only one that you need to have. So, let's go ahead. Currently, I have CKF's Portalus Frame with a drawbridge. So, if we activate the switch, it'll pull down a drawbridge. Now, this was just sort of, I want to do it. It, it has no other function. Um, this gate is large enough to let something as big as a Rex through. So, it acts like a large gate frame, dinosaur gate. And then you just walk up to it, open it up. And so this is the main chamber. This is the breeding chamber and everything in here. So you have your main gate to let dinosaurs out, in and out. However, if you're breeding something that's bigger than a Rex, this here is a custom, a custom gate from S+. Can you do it without this? Absolutely. You just, you may, you, Honestly, you probably couldn't, but you could try. There are other gates that can be used that just don't go on Saddles Plus. But anyway, this is a dynamic gate and door. I made it out of glass, and it is seven blocks wide by about six blocks tall. And blocks, just for all understanding, is foundation, foundation blocks. And then this serves as two purposes. I can get my bigger dinos in and out, and if I want to drive, my boat somewhere, I can actually see because if I was to try and do this from outside or in K mode, the building is too massive. You can't do it. Okay, so just keep that in mind. If you are to recreate this, you will need some kind some kind of glass gate. I gotta check this out. What's going on with this? Oh, okay. Um I did make a lie. Um, well, actually, it's a thing of convenience anyway. So I'll cover that in just a second. But what's going on here is this has everything you need for your breeding. You have three three air conditioners, which is good. Um, you may need more depending on the egg you're trying to hatch. So basically, I've hatched everything up to a wyvern, so it should be no problem. But I haven't done it on this size yet, so I haven't seen if it could go all the way over here or anything. I don't think that'll be a problem, though. If it does, you'll just need to move a move a uh, air conditioner over here. And for you saying, well, how am I getting the electricity over here, all that? In here is my generator. Now, I've, I've encapsulated it a little bit because I've had issues in the past with things breaking. So I want to make sure that the... Uh, generator is protected and I have here I'll show you the wires because with S plus you can actually hide the wires I have wires going out to about here you can make it further or less but I found here was about as perfect as you need I've got a I've got a junction box right here and it reaches all the way to the other ends so it's perfect size and all you really need now is a few things. You need 
a refrigerator to keep all of your food and eggs in. I have that over here. So I have a bunch of Rex eggs that are in the process of being hatched or being queued to be hatched. A bunch of Wyvern eggs and milk, of course, that will hatch them. But I, so you have that over there again, protected by another layer of defense. And this is the S plus nanny. So it's a thing of convenience. So this is what I was talking about a minute ago when I, when I got a little sidetracked. She will raise your dinos for you. She'll imprint them. The only thing she won't do is claim them. So if you put down an egg, you can't just walk away and it'll be all okie dory. What you can do is you can hatch an egg, claim it, and then let her do all the work. So it's no more sitting up all night trying to raise a dino. Now, I did forget to put this down earlier, so I'm just going to fix that right now. You will need a feeding trough in here. I've learned my lesson the hard way once already. You're going to need, she'll feed your dinos up to 15%. After that, you need a trough in here to feed them. Otherwise, they will die. I've learned my lesson the hard way. That being said, that's the breeding portion of it. But this is a little bit more diverse than just a breeding chamber. You don't even need to bring your dinos in to breed. Like with the arts new mechanics, all you need to do is enable mating and they will mate standing still. So you can make them just go to anywhere. You just need to take the eggs and put them in here to be hatched. So this is more like a hatchery chamber than anything. But it also has another function, one that I'm actually quite proud of. The whole reason I made a boat. It is a taming center as well. So if we look up, we're going to see I have a great big behemoth gate right in the center of the room. Well, it's close to the center. The room's a little off-center, but I couldn't really do much about that. Um, from here, all you would do is you would open up that gate when you leave to go capture an ant, like capture a uh, whatever you're trying to tame. Let's say a freaking, uh, I don't know, let's say a trike. You take your wyvern or whatever, and you would drop him into the roof, if you can care, lift him through that. Otherwise, you have to somehow lure him in. But most dinos in the game, any smaller than a rex, can be, can be dropped in through a wyvern. But what you would do is you would open up this gate before you leave, take your animal of choice, and fly off. Bring it back, drop off the animal. He'll fall down through here. He'll take a little bit of damage, nothing major. And then I have four turrets right here, sitting on the um, be another behemoth gate. And what will happen is these guys actually have complete visibility to this entire room. So if I'm standing over here, that guy has me. And so does that guy. If I'm standing all the way over here, that guy has me. All the way over here, that guy has me. So no matter where I stand, there is somebody, there is a turret that has me in their sights. Now, you're probably thinking, well, a turret? Well, come on now. Without, it'll shoot the dino. It won't, it'll, it won't taint, it won't trank it. Well, that's true on vanilla, but these are S plus turrets and they have different varieties. These four here are trank turrets. So they will knock you out. The only catch is you have to use shocking tranquilizer darts, which are a pain in the butt to get. But I have ways of getting around that. So coming up here is the second floor. And basically to open up, to get to the turrets, you just open up the secret gate. Boom. Right there. You can access their inventory. And then uh, we'll ignore that. That's, that has nothing to do with the build. That's just a teleporter. So if you have a teleporter mod on, you can use it. And then stairs to get upstairs, outside. And then from here, this is where you're going to have... Oh, Jesus! Okay, so I just switched that over to manual. Key, key point, because you, you're going to want to leave your flyer, wyvern, whatever you're going to be using to tame things, or not tame things, but capture things, so argy, wyvern, whatever, on here. 
honestly, you're going to want it to also be able to, <clears throat> excuse me, you, you could fit about two wyverns up here approximately, um, but you only should ever really have one, and you'll probably put it right here in the middle, whatever you want, but just, anyway. Um, and then, yeah, you'll just fly off, you'll take it, and when you come back, make sure that this gate is open, you'll drop the, you'll drop the, the dino down in here, you'll land wherever, shut this gate, and you're good to go. These guys should, like the uh, turrets, are powered by the by the generator downstairs. It has enough reach. All you got to do is make sure it stays has uh, darts in it, and then it'll automatically take care of the any dino down in this pin. Now, the size of this pin is pretty massive. It's approximately fifteen blocks tall and approximately fifteen blocks wide, give or take, and because of that, it is, um, it's very um, unorthodox and very difficult to drive, as I mentioned before. Like, as I said, if you want to drive this, the best way to do it is to have a clear glass wall in both directions. Now, I'm not, like, this wall is pretty, like, I have a way to see out, so it's a lot easier, but just keep in mind that the more visibility you have, the better. This is just a large blind spot. But this is version three compared to version one. It version one went about to here, if I remember correctly. It was tiny. Version two went to about here, and now version three is all the way out to here. Now the only reason I could do that was because of struck or um, platforms plus. Without it, you would not be able to do it. You need platform plus, structures plus, um, S plus. The only thing it's really good for is being able to get these dish additional items, such as the nanny, um, wires that you can hide, smaller air conditioners, and these turrets. It's You can literally do without the entire thing. Like You can sit here and trank, you can go up on that ledge and trank, whatever. You don't need those turrets. It just makes it an automated process, that's all. And then CKF. CKF is really a good addition because it helps make this build look a lot cleaner and nicer. Gives more durability to these ceilings and stuff. So if you do get something like a Giga in here that does damage, it's going to take a bit more before he gets through. But that being said, uh, it does have its flaws. Like right now, these, uh, these are not vanilla sized walls. They are actually about a one and a half tall. So you, you will need to account for that, so you get a lot more space. That's a, both a boon and a negative. It's a boon because you get more headspace for less for less for less walls. It's a negative because when you try to attach things like vanilla behemoth gates or even as even the the dynamic gate, it will not line up properly. It just can't. There is another mod called CKF Remastered that adds in a lot of functionality, giving you tools to bring in height differences, bring in that extra half a block for vanilla so you can get that difference. It is a work in progress, and it's not being used here at all. So take that with a grain of salt, but it is out there if, you, if you're interested. So for now, though, guys, I want to thank you so much for paying attention and checking this out with me. Uh, for the people I'll be posting this for mostly, uh, no more than four large dinos in here at one time, please. I do not want to have to rebuild this for a fourth time. That being said, thanks so much for watching. Keep having fun, and we'll talk to you next week. Oh, actually, before I say all that, uh, I do have to say this. If you do like this video and you want to see more, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. As well as I do stream on Fridays and Saturdays most of the day. So you can check me out on twitch.tv slash 89 Now that being said, keep having fun and we'll catch you later.